might want to put your vape down for this one because a new study has found that e-cigarette users with COVID-19 are more likely to experience enhanced system and maybe seek ER care. Research from Mayo Clinic shows that those who vape have a higher occurrence of COVID-19 symptoms, including headaches, muscle or chest pains, nausea, diarrhea or loss of taste and smell. To tell us more about these findings is Dr. Catherine Igbe from the South African Medical Research. Uh, research Council. Uh, thank you very much for your time, uh, Doctor. Perhaps just to paint a broad picture thank of you. some of the most salient findings that this research revealed about those who vape and get COVID-19 as opposed to those who don't vape and get COVID-19. Thank you uh, for inviting me. I think that, uh, first of all, I must just mention that um, most of the things mentioned in the paper are things that have been found in some other studies. Uh, it's been found that uh, um, um, using electronic cigarettes actually can increase your risk of cardiovascular diseases and COPD. So when we know, we know at least a, a lot more uh, about COVID presently compared to in 2020, 2020, at the beginning of 2020, when we were first hit with the pandemic. So many of the things that, uh, that were said in the paper are actually speaking to what we already know. And what the paper found was that um, compared to, okay, so they looked at uh, people who don't use electronic cigarettes at all and people who don't use cigarettes at all. So they had two cohorts uh, that were the treatment group, that what we call the treatment group. So the two cohorts were those who use electronic cigarettes and those who use both electronic cigarettes and cigarettes. And what they found was that in, compared to non-users, even though the, 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 the sample of those who use cigarettes and electronic cigarettes exclusively and those who use electronic cigarettes were smaller than those who were not using at all, as is typical for, for most studies when you do epidemiology uh, on, on, on use, they still found that there was a, a higher likelihood or a, there were more frequency of people who had these COVID-19 symptoms that you just mentioned, you know. They had all the uh, um, headaches, nausea, and so many other uh, symptoms, you know, sore throat, uh, cough, congestion, diarrhea, fatigue, uh, and lightheadedness, and so many others. So in all of the symptoms that were investigated, they, they found that People who used, uh, um, uh, sorry, who used um, vapes or electronic cigarettes were having a higher likelihood of these symptoms. Mm. So um, it, it just speaks to the, 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 the issues that we've been raising about electronic cigarettes in the country that, you know, these are not safe products. These are products that should actually be highly regulated. No, absolutely. But how does this then affect the treatment process of those who use e-cigarettes or who vape uh, and then end up in hospital due to COVID-19? The treatment of that particular patient, does it become that much more difficult to treat the symptoms given the habit of vaping? Okay, so the, the paper didn't really talk about the um, treatment process for these people. I'm sure they'll be treated like any other person presenting with COVID-19 symptoms. It just speaks to the fact that the doctors will be having more to deal with if they have more people having these symptoms. I'm sure we're getting to that point where because of the vaccine, we want to get to that point where people don't even show up in the hospitals. So if you're having symptoms, it's also there that there's a likely, there's a higher likelihood that you will show up in a hospital and you know, be labeled the, the, the health system. So I think that at the end of the day, it's all about um, keeping people safer during the COVID-19 pandemic and reducing the load of the hospitals because when you have symptoms, you find yourself there. If you don't have symptoms, you can actually take care of yourself at home and you know, just be very comfortable uh, um, just isolating. You know? So I think that it, it boils down to the point that the use of these products tend to add uh, um, more um, um, harm to the system, the health system, and tend to, you know, be labeled the health system generally.
Right, and, and the report does touch on the fact that vaping or using e-cigarettes does have long-term effects on the human body, particularly the lungs. So what role can government or related stakeholders play in terms of regulating this particular industry and perhaps having that messaging going out there, uh, highlighting the high risks associated with vaping or using e-cigarettes? Yes, um, so... I think that uh, what's ha, personally what I would recommend is that the control for electronic delivery for tobacco and the electronic delivery systems bill, which has been on since 2018 when it was uh, um, put out for public comment, needs to be fast tracked so that there is the regulation that is highly needed, like it's needed like urgently in South Africa because we know that. What is happening in, this, in the, in the uh, electronic uh, uh, cigarette space is that they are making use of the loophole, exploiting the loophole, the regulatory loophole that we currently have. You know, South Africa is even counted among the countries that are regulating electronic cigarettes, but we know that that is not very true because it's supposed to be controlled as a medicine under the Medicines Control Act but it's not being regulated as such because you can find it in very strategic positions in shopping malls, very, uh, you know, brightly colored uh, um, kiosk set up in very strategic positions in these malls. And then we've even seen cases where they've erected billboards. You don't see that for tobacco any longer, right? Because it's been regulated. And because there's this regulatory loophole, the, 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 the electronic cigarette uh, uh, industry is exploiting it and raising mm. billboards and telling people to try the products before they buy them. These are things that are not even done uh, anymore with cigarettes. So if they are regulated, we won't be seeing all these things that target young people. In a paper we published last year, we found out that about 65% uh, of the vape shops are located in about 20 kilometers radius of universities, which means that they are targeting young people. We also found in another study that the more, the closer you live to a vape shop, the higher the likelihood that you will be vaping. So I think that it, it gets to this point where we really, really need to take action in, in South Africa so that young people can be protected, our health systems can be protected because the COVID-19 pandemic is not yet over. We still need to do a lot of things to make sure that people are safe and people are, are, you know, uh, are not targeted uh, uh, by the industry. No, absolutely. And of course, when these products are marketed, uh, doctor, they're usually marketed as safer than actual uh, cigarettes. But of course, uh, to the contrary, that is not true. Dr. Mini, thanks for joining us this morning with that. Let's